Right, back now to uh, Governor Granholm spending a lot of time in the uh, waning days of the campaign on the west side of the state today. That's right. She joins us live via telephone. Governor, thanks for being with us tonight. You bet. Thank you. All right, Governor Engler, the, or I'm sorry, Governor Granholm, I'm so sorry. The ads have been so ugly, so negative lately. Everyone I talk to is sick of these ads. Why do two grown adults have to resort to such ugliness? Well, I, I, that's a great question. I'm sick of the ads, too. You know, my opponent's got one up now saying that I don't favor limits on welfare. I mean, it's just, it's totally deceptive. It, the, the whole thing is, I, you know, I, I, this guy has um, spent an awful lot of money telling people that he's a jobs maker in Michigan, telling people that, that the, the reason why Michigan's economy is challenged is because of me. Talk about deceptive. I mean, the reason why Michigan's economy is challenged is because of the auto industry. And folks in Flint and Saginaw and the whole I-75 corridor know it very well. I think it is important for people to get the full story, but they need to know what is the economic plan of the people who are presenting themselves as governor. I haven't heard what my opponent said, but I can tell you we've got an aggressive economic plan to put this state and make this state move further down the right track to diversify our economy. Governor, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we, we're a little bit up against the clock here, so uh, please, uh, I apologize. Um, you are, in some polls, 8 to 10 points up at this point. But in those same polls, there is an indication that a majority, uh, more than 50 percent of Michiganians, do not approve of the way you're conducting uh, yourself in this office. They don't approve of your job performance, in other words. Even if you win, don't you have an enormous task ahead of you with over half of the electorate disapproving of, of your job performance? The job performance numbers are a reflection of the economy. I know that very well. And yes, there is a big task ahead. No matter who is in this chair, you've got to work 24-7, 365 days a year to transform this economy. And that is what I am doing, and that is what I will continue to do. What would you say, Governor Granholm, right now to an undecided voter? I tell them that I'm going to fight for all of our citizens. I'm not just going to fight for the fortunate few or the privileged. I am a moderate Democrat. I'm a mainstream Democrat. And, and my opponent, you just heard him on the air, he was talking about this issue of choice he does not favor a woman's right to choose, even in the case of rape or incest, and would criminalize that decision. He was deceptive even in the way he responded to you. Actually, he I think said he, he said that the, the life of the mother must always be protected, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Yes, but you, he was talking about partial birth abortion. Of course, the life must be protected. And in partial birth abortion, the health and life should be protected to be constitutional. But with respect to the right to choose overall, he said that he favored the laws as they are. That's what he said. But the laws as they are, if Roe versus Wade is overturned, means that the right to choose will be criminalized. Governor Granholm, go how many partial birth abortions happen in this state a year? I have no idea, but I don't think it's very many at all. In fact, I don't think the practice is used much at all. It means a late-term abortion, and late-term abortions are already illegal. In this state? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Governor, appreciate your time. Good luck the rest of the way. You bet. Thank you. All right. All right. We'll be right back right after this.